create a new project. In this tutorial, we're going to do a little bit larger size, so 12 by 8 uh, by 3 quarter is fine. Click OK. Now we want to explore some of the little more, what would, some would call more advanced features uh, in the Project Designer. These are still in the basic version of the software. Uh, they're in, available in all versions. Uh, but it starts getting a little more dynamic in the creations that you can create. So let's start by, let's draw a rectangle. We often start projects by kind of defining the space that we're going to be creating our designs within. And we can go ahead and set this. We know that our board is 12 by 8. So let's make a one inch border on both sides. So let's set this dimension here to 10 inches and then this dimension to 6 and that gives us if we center this center both that gives us one inch all the way around for this border and then let's make this a carved region that carved region that same tool that allows you to recess any section that you've drawn so the carved region always defaults at, at a quarter inch, but this time we're going to use the pierced button. And this checkbox here, if you click that, it will take whatever that you've put down there, pattern or region, whatever you're carving, and it will actually push it all the way down to the bottom of the board. So, you know, you can see it on the other side. This carves all the way through. Now the beauty of the carve right is that you can carve all the way through uh, projects without having to have a backer board on it as long as you've got enough thickness and you've got rails for the machine to hold on to on either side as it's moving in and out because uh, the belts there's two belts and you've got a separation in between the belts that allow the bit to go all the way through without interfering with any of the drive mechanism and you can carve all the way through with with no sacrificial underneath. So this allows us some fun design possibilities here. So this particular project, we're going to design like a, uh, a vent or a grill for say like an air conditioning vent in the ceiling or in a wall, or maybe it's it's a grill for some kind of light fixture, a lamp that, uh, that you want light coming through and kind of silhouetting these carvings here. So we're going to fill up this space with carvings but leave gaps so that you've got space here. So let's click on the blue shell to open the pattern library. Let's go to our basic patterns and let's start with a rosette. A rosette in the middle seems like a very appropriate piece for this project and I like this particular rosette. Let's right click, center both, and actually I can scale it down just a little bit. We'll be adjusting this as we go along and then the vines are really useful because they're nice and thin enough that they're gonna let a lot of space through but they kind of reach around and one thing that we're gonna have to do is like if we carve this without you know the vine just this rosette with this hole then that rosette would just fall out the middle so we need to tie in this piece to the edges and we're going to use these vines to do that and I'm just going to kind of rotate these around until I see a fixture that kind of works one thing I'm looking at is these points here is I want to try to create those onto planes and I think maybe it might work better on this side yeah, that does work a lot better. We can see the little feathers to see where it's actually uh, inter intersecting a little bit on those rectangular edges there. And we also want to look at uh, these access points here, the centers on both sides, because not only do we need it to attach and touch these edges, but we need it to attach to the other elements that are in here which for this particular one is going to be itself so we're going to right click on this and go up to mirror mirror all so then we get a nice four-way mirror and we can start seeing the design here that we're creating it's a 
you know, simple, it's two pieces, but we're creating kind of an intricate, fun shape. So let's adjust this until we've got all of our points kind of touching the way that we feel they should. And then we also want to make some adjustments here. This carving is sitting on top of our rosette, so we want to push that back. And let's look at all these depths too. This is going to be something maybe we we really need to rotate in and see if we can, because we can see this is getting really thick, and that might be too thick for what we're we're looking at. But then again, let's let's click this. If we do pierced, it gets really thin, and I think that might be too thin for our piece. And then you've got these thick edges around it. So I think we need to meet somewhere in between. So let's try setting all of our carvings in here to a half of an inch. And Let's adjust the height of these pieces here down to, let's try 70, let's try 50, and maybe we need to actually adjust the depth of this particular piece up a little bit. So instead of 5, maybe this one's at 4, 5, and then that pushes it on top. And then we want to look, did we lose too much detail by shallowing that up so much? don't think so. So this is the kind of push and pull and the kind of looking and reacting and changing things that you do constantly when you're working on designs within Project Designer. There is no one way to do anything uh, and this is a visual tool so you need to actually be really looking and seeing what it is that you're designing because the machine's going to do exactly what you tell it to do. So let's make sure we're telling it to do things that look good by looking well here in the software before we send it over to the machine. Okay, here's some parts that don't look good, these feathers. And if you remember back in our sign making project, we turned those off by clicking on the patterns that were creating that interference and then turning the feather to none. Alright, so it's still interacting with these edges and intersecting and giving us so this isn't the feather showing up this is actually the pattern just cutting into the edge of our rectangle so let's use another tool here so under carving list we can see all of our patterns and I'm going to take all of the patterns we've put within here using the shift key select them all and I'm going to use this button down here group a group allows them to all be put into a folder and then I can right click and rename this group and we can call it something like uh, grill patterns and then hit the enter key if you don't hit the enter key it won't retain the name that you've given it but this is a way to get very organized especially when you get lots and lots and lots of patterns you want to be able to nest different groups together so you can easily go and find what you want but it also allows for very dynamic uh, merging and and other tools which we'll start getting into in this tutorial on the next so the first one of these tools is we're going to explore is called clip carving clip carving as you can kind of see from the images here it allows you to exclude or include two intersecting or intersecting patterns or elements. So in this case we're going to do a clip carving inclusive to that folder with all of our patterns in it is we want to include them within the rectangular shape that it's interacting with. So it's interacting with anything that's in the same directory level as this group. And we can make further adjustments from here if we if we feel the need as well want to intersect a couple more places okay so now this is all going to carve out as one solid piece with all of these black parts it's actually going to carve all the way through there in one single pass 
So let's go ahead and add a few more details to this particular project. So say this is some kind of grill, maybe it's recessed into something and it's gotta be mounted. So let's go ahead and add some mounting holes. We're gonna use the drill tool. The drill tool is, does exactly what it says. It puts drill holes in. So we can go and just click on the board where you want that hole. Tell it the diameter of the hole that you want, uh, how deep, whether it's through a hole, um, and you can set it if it's going to do it in multiple passes. It's actually going to spiral that drill hole. Um, well, in the case of a, a 1 8 inch diameter, it doesn't need to spiral much if you're using an 8 inch bit. So we're going to just use the standard defaults here and click OK. And we can position that exactly from either edge if we want. If we want this a half an inch from both edges, we can position that there and then we can right click and mirror that four ways as well. And now we've got four mounting holes on all four corners of our piece. Now, of course, we cannot forget to do our optimization. So you need to click on your patterns and select the bit optimization best. Since this is mirrored, I only have to do it to this one pattern. And then we need it to do the center piece as well. And I don't think we're gonna have any issues with needing feather or draft in this particular project. We can always run a test carve if it's something that we're concerned about on some scrap material. If it's something that we're, we need to verify before we go put it into an expensive piece of wood and that's a practice that everybody should always be using is that if you've got a project that you that is not tested you need to do a test carve before you use your most expensive piece of wood uh, just to verify that everything is carving the way you think it is because even though we're looking at the screen here and we're trying to verify that everything is exactly what we want to sometimes we miss something and we don't want to find it in you know an $80 piece of lumber okay that's the end of that project there's nothing fancy to the way it uploads you just upload it and put it on whatever quality setting you're looking for and take it to the machine and carve it.